นโมตัสสะภะคะวะโตอะระหะโตสัมมาสัมโพธัสสะครับท่านเรียนวันเ
less bawanga. For those who are lazy or less intelligent, more bawanga, right? But these consciousness, these consciousness are not active, right? Not active, not active. But here, the first one, the meditator has fallen asleep. I think um, if we are in jhana, actually near to the jhana, after jhana or before jhana, I think we are not likely to sleep. Because jhana chaitas are very powerful, right? Very powerful. So before or after, we, we will not be sleeping, right? Of course, sometimes, some meditator said that uh, during their meditation, uh, they look like they fall asleep. No thinking, right? Everything became blank. Maybe it's because of Bawanka, right? It's nothing to do with the jhana, right? Huh? Nothing to do with the jhana. Here, uh, the second mastery of the jhana, Second master of the jhana said that uh, samapachana uh, um, was sibawa, the mastery in attainment. So that means the ability to attain the different jhanas quickly and easily, without many pawanga arising in the process of their attainment. As you know, when we attain jhana for the first time, there's only one mind moment. Jhana, one mind moment, according to Abhidhamma, right? One mind moment. After one jhana, jhana uh, consciousness, there will be a lot of bhavanga. For those who are intelligent or active all the time, less bhavanga, right? For those who are not active, or who are uh, maybe uh, less intelligent, they may have a lot of pawanga, right? A lot of pawanga. But anyway, when meditator is practicing jhana for the for many times, he is a uh, clever in uh, you know um, practicing jhana, entering jhana, right? For those times, when jhana moment, consciousness moment to another, maybe in between there may be less pawanga. So that is what uh, Mastery went to say, the mastery of the attainment. So between uh, jhana, jhana attainment, so we're trying to reduce the amount of pawanga, the amount of an active consciousness, right? So that is what uh, Mastery went to say. Here also, so when we are doing something, we can also practice this one, right? to reduce the amount of bhavanga. So bhavanga are the consciousness that are not very active, right? So whatever we do, when we are walking, when we are, uh, when we are talking, when we are thinking, we're trying to reduce the amount of anatomy mind or bhavanga, right? We can also do like this. So meditator has no thoughts, but it's not in a jhana. Actually, if we understand the nature of Bawanga, it's quite easy, right? As I said, uh, before and after jhana, our mind is really very powerful. So I think, uh, naturally, we are not sleeping. But of course, when we uh, come out from the jhana, there may be some thinking, some thought, right? Sometimes we call it reviewing. Of we are trying to review what we have experienced during the jhana, right? During the jhana. Of course, the thought thinking may be there, or the reviewing may be there, right? So this is a the question from the students, okay? So I think uh, the jhanas are very difficult to explain. Of course, if we have a, our own experience, easier, easier to explain, yeah? Just like uh, talking about our our life, mindset, right? Very more easier. So anyway, today we will go to immaterial consciousness. We're trying to explain immaterial consciousness.
So here, Aruba, Aruba Vajra Cheda, Immaterial Sphere Consciousness. So this one I have explained previous week. Tray type of Immaterial uh, Sphere Consciousness. So we have a four person Aruba Cheda, four uh, resident Cheda, four uh, functional consciousness, right? Or do we have the so yeah, regarding with the immaterial, I mean, if we learn today, you will understand that this is a formless meditation. Formless meditation. So in this, during this meditation, immaterial sphere consciousness, so there will be no perception of form. So therefore we call it immaterial. So such as the infinity of space between one person and another, there is space, right? There's no material form. One table to another, there is a space. No material form, right? So even though Abhidharma, the Buddha said that this is, this is a considered as a uh, matter or rupa, but this is not real rupa. Just concept, right? Just concept. So therefore, the infinity of space is not material form, the infinity of consciousness, yeah, of course this is not material form. <coughs> now we have wholesome consciousness, we have four wholesome consciousness, number one, wholesome consciousness pertaining to the base of infinite space, infinite space, limitless space. Number two, the wholesome consciousness pertaining to the base of infinite consciousness. Here, consciousness. Number three, wholesome consciousness pertaining to the base of nothingness. Nothingness. That's nothing, so we'll explain later. Number four, wholesome consciousness pertaining to the base of neither perception or non perception. So this is a um, yeah, perception is a mental factor, right? Mental factor. So therefore, it is not material form. Therefore, all these are called immaterial sphere consciousness. So these four centaurs are experienced by wardlings, photogena, or trainees, sikha. So their responding resident centaurs arises only in the immaterial realms. I think if we learn that chapter, you will know this one. So actually these corresponding resident chaitas function only three things. Number one is the, it, will, uh, it will be the resident consciousness in the immaterial sphere realm, arupa realm, right? As a uh, resident consciousness. Sorry. Uh, river consciousness, as a river consciousness. Then during uh, at the life at, uh, uh, during immaterial sphere realm, so it was uh, served as a bawanga. Another one is a death consciousness. Only three functions. So therefore, those resident chaitas arise only in the immaterial realm. Now, functional consciousness, as usual, experienced by our hands, right? Our hands. So, all together, we have 12 immaterial sphere realms, uh, consciousness. To attain immaterial sphere jhanas, one had to practice meditation with the one of the nine casino meditation method. Normally, we have a 10 casino meditation method. So man then, so we cannot write it space, Akasa casino method. So this one, we cannot, if we write this one, we cannot attain immaterial sphere consciousness. So here, uh, Arupa jhana of uh, the fifth jhana, 
So we can call immaterial sphere jhana as a fifth jhana according to a Vedama. But according to Soda, fourth jhana, right? Fourth jhana. So there are only two jhana factors equanimity and one pointedness. So as you know, when we learn about uh, one to fifth jhana, material jhana, fine material jhana, so we try to reduce the amount of feeling. So when we arrive at the fifth jhana, the feeling became equanimity, right? Our feeling is reduced to minimum level. Minimum level. But here also, so when we attain immaterial jhana also, so this also considered as a fifth jhana or fourth jhana. The reason is they are together with equanimity and one pointedness. Of course, the amount of the amount of the power of the mind, especially the power of the feeling is reduced to lesser and lesser. They are reduced, they are lesser and lesser, right? So when we arrive the fourth Arupa jhana, fourth immaterial sphere jhanas, so we neither perception or non-perception, right? So here perception me talking about all the Cheta and Cheta Sika. So all the Cheta and Cheta Sika look like nothing, right? Look like nothing. So therefore, it is reduced to um, so when we write uh, the four immaterial jhana reduced to mi minimum level. So here, regarding with the casino, before we learn about immaterial jhanas, we need to know about casino. So based on that, we have to practice. So otherwise, we cannot attain, right? We cannot attain immaterial jhana. So here, casino means whole or totalities. So when we practice meditation object, so we have to we have to look at the whole and total of meditation object. We uh, we have to observe total of or the whole meditation method, just like here, right? So here, this is a yellow, yellow casino, I would say that, right? Yellow casino, yellow color one. So meditator have to sit down and just look at this one, this sake. You have to look at the whole sake, not in one part, not at the center. You have to look at the whole sake. So that is called casino, right? Regarding with the casino meditation, Bhikkhu Bodhi write that casinos are discs representing elements or colors used as a object of samadhi meditation. So we have a colors as well as elements. For example, the art casino is a disc filled with the red and brown clay. And I will show you the picture later. So the water casino is a bowl of water. The color casinos are colored disc. So as I said, uh, the, the one the guy is looking at the yellow color disc, right? So this is a yellow color. So this one is a we call it art casino. Uh, red it brown color. We call sometimes we call it. Uh, down color, right? So when the sun arises, so we have the color. Before sun arises, we have a color, right? So the bad thing is to uh, to take it that color. So this is a, the art casino. Here, casino means totality or whole. So when we look at this meditation object, so we have to look at the whole, right? But it should be 9 or 10 inches in diameter. If the casino object is too big, we cannot see it totally, right? But of course, people at the behind can see it. But at the front, too big. 
too big for that, right? So I think um, when we do a casino, we have to do around 9 or 10 inches in diameter. So that uh, it will be easier to look at the whole casino, right? The whole casino. That is the practice. For those who want to know uh, more detail, you can go to these pages, right? These pages. <coughs> but we casino make a disk. Sometimes uh, sand translator use device or sake. Only cloth or only wall or a frame filled fill with the red, uh, reddish brown clay. It should be 9 or 10 inches in diameter. So the, the surface of the clay should be made as smooth as possible. So um, a man that nine or ten inches or sake, so you have to uh, you have to paste the ready colored clay, right? But when you paste it, try to make it smooth, right? Uh, as uh, as much as possible. Try to make it smooth so that when you see then you see less defects, right? So it will be have to try to be smooth, right? You have to put it in front of you, in, in front of you, not too close, not too far. Normally, as the picture shows that the guy is sitting around uh, three or three or four feet away, right? Three or four feet away. So you have to sit down, uh, sit comfortably, and keep the upper part of the body upright. So you can sit down. As usual, so keep your body upright, right? Sit down comfortably. So keep the casino rib, uh, casino digs uh, in front of you, in front of your your are your 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 eye, right? It should be very straight to your eye. It shouldn't be up or down. It shouldn't be in. Uh, at, at your friend so that when you see the casino digs it will be easier to see and you will be uh, it will be clearer to see right look at the whole of our digs casino digs uh, attentively with the full of concentration it's very important part so you are now your meditation method is uh, the art casino right the art casino so put it in front of you, three or four feet away. Just look at that one. So all your attention must be there. Do not think about other things. Right? All your attention must be there. So while looking at it, you have to recite in your mind, art, the art, the art, the art, or art, 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 right? In English. <coughs> In Bali, better we, better we, better we, in your mind, right? In your mind. So you can, you have to, not quickly, of course. But we, but we, but we, no, not like this, right? Not very slowly, and you share pace, right? You share pace. So you have to, while you are looking at that, the the disc, so you have to, you have to recite in your mind, the art, the art, the art, the art. Do not close your eye. Have to look at right. The art, the art, the art. That's all. So just uh, recite in your mind. You can use it any language. It's very important one because if we use our own language, it will be much better. So the most important thing is to visualize, to capture the casino in our mind's eye. So the idea is we want, we want to take photo with our mind, right? So this is the main point. You can use it any language. You have to do it under the sign. Now I think everyone knows it, Nimeda, right? Nimeda. Here, Nimeda means the sign or the object in your mind or main object in your mind. 
is called nimeda, right? Nimeda. So you have to do it until the sign or the ask objects appear in, in your mind's eye. So the main point is to capture that ask disk in your mind. So if you can memorize, if you can visualize as soon as possible, it is successful. Just looking at uh, the casino disk and thinking here and there, it is not a good meditation, right? So all your attention must be there. So here we take up, bring your mind to the meditation object. So your mind may go away. Then bring back, we take up, bring back your mind to the meditation object. And we chara, trying to stay to meditation object, right? Mostly two chana factors have to work together. Then you have to close your eye and try to visualize in your mind's eye that casino disc. Then by closing your eye, by visualizing that art disc, you reside in your mind. Art, art, art. Or better we, better we, better we like this, right? Then sometime it will lost in your mind again. You cannot remember or you cannot memorize, you cannot visualize that nimeda or that sign, right? But you have to go back again and look at. And by looking at the casino disc, then you chant art, art, art. You're trying to capture again and close your eye, try again. So if you can memorize, you are successful. But if you cannot memorize, try to open your eye again, have to capture, right, that meditation object. So in this stage, so that meditation object or that uh, nimeda is called the, prepa the preparatory sign or pre-kama nimeda. Now you're preparing to capture that casino disc, right, preparatory stage or sign. So you're trying to visualize again until it appear in your mind very clearly and also firmly. So when that sign is captured in the mind, you can practice, you can go to anywhere. You can go to anywhere and you practice, you close your eye, try to visualize the art disk art, 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 or better we, better we, better we. So when that nimeda is very powerful, wherever you go, uh, you'll be able to see that art disk, right? That meditation object. Even you do not close your eye, you will still see it, right? But here, if you can capture in your mind, you can go to anywhere. That you can practice, close your eye, and try to meditate on that uh, nimeda again. Then now you can fully capture that nimeda in your mind's eye. So that is called grab sign because you can able to grab that meditation object with your mind. Oka nimeda, a big body and Beku Nyana only they use learning sign, right? Learning sign. So actually this one is much better because the literal translation. So you're trying to grab or you're trying to capture your mind. Capture the meditation object in your mind, right? So that is called grab sign. And you try to fix your mind upon that mental image of us disk right and also all the time you chant in your mind up 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 like this right so in this way you will be able to develop concentration further so at this stage meditator trying to eliminate five mental hindrances so as you know we have here 
five minor hindrances are very important. But when you learn uh, Abhidhamma in the six, uh, seven chapter, seven chapter, so six minor hindrances. But here, a wager or ignor ignorance is added as a hindrances, right? But I think in the soda, in the in the soda, there's only five hindrances. So I think later I will show the reason, the reason why the soda said that, right? So hinder five hindrances, uh, sensory desire, right? Sensory desire number one, a way, sloth and torpor, and breathless, breathlessness and remorse, and doubt. That's all right. Slow than top on here. All right. Only five. Only five, right? So, so when you can, so remember that you are trying to capture the meditation object in your mind. So when you are just focusing on all your attention on the meditation object, you will not have sensory desire, and you will not have a way. But of course, if you cannot capture family, there will be sensory desire. You will think about something. Also, you will have a uh, dislike or hatred, and you will maintain a bodily pain like this. It will, right? You want to sleep, sleep the slot and proper like this. So you will have a uh, mental hindrances. But at this stage, you are you you are able to capture your uh, meditation object nimeta in your mind. So therefore, all your attention is there. So there's no place for sensory desire, airway, etc. So in this way, you are in other way you're trying to drive away five mental hindrances, right? Later by later. So in this way, the hindrances will become lesser and lesser. By gradually subsiding all these hindrances, the mind will be getting brighter and brighter. So as you know, our mind is not bright, not clear, because of hindrances. If we have... Oh, very bad. Sorry. If we have sensory perception, sensory desire in our mind, if we have a way, even now we have a little bit of a way here. <laughs> so what I want to say is, if we have those hindrances in our mind, right? Our mind is not clear, not bright. But now the meditator is trying to deepen his concentrations, trying to drive away, not only, actually, he is not driving away intentionally, but he is just developing his concentration, one-pointedness of the mind to the meditation object, or nimeda. So in this way, all his attention is there. No place for hindrances. So in this way, if there is no hindrances, the mind became brighter and brighter, pure and pure. Right? So that is here, very important one. As a result of it, the sign, Nimeta or Akasina, being a reflection of the mind, will also be getting brighter and brighter. Think about that. We are now meditating on uh, the Nimeta or the sign on the Ask Disk, right? So actually, we can capture that nimeda in our, uh, in, our, in our mind. So we develop our mindfulness, concentration, one-pointedness of the mind, only that meditation object, right? That we try to remove in this way, no chance for hindrances. If there's no hind hindrances, the mind became brighter and brighter, and clearer and clearer. So if the mind is clearer and pure, so the object, meditation object that, that we are taking is getting brighter and 
uh, brighter and brighter because of the mind. Actually, this is a mental image, right? If the mind is bright, if the mind is pure, that mental image also getting brighter, right? Remember that that mental image, or we call it nimeda, or kinetics, getting brighter and brighter, right? So at this stage, defects such as finger impression. So as you know, when we make art, the art disc, right? So we have to use our hand and make, uh, try to make smooth as much as possible, right? As much as possible. So anyway, there will be sand foot impression there, impression there. But when your mind is, uh, your concentration is getting uh, higher and higher, when your mind is free from hindrances, the mind also getting purer and brighter. So actually, that casino disc in the also the reflection of the mind. So therefore, that casino disc also getting brighter and brighter. Now. It is at this stage, there is no defects. So all the fin finger impression are removed. No more finger impression. Because the casino is getting brighter, right? Shining or luminous. So it became like a shining sake ball. Shining sake ball in your mind. So remember that at this time, only 9 or 10 10 inches, right? You have only 9 or 10 inches shining sake ball. Very shining. It is a reflection of the mind. If the mind is shining, if the mind is uh, getting bright, so uh, the reflection of the mind, that limit are also getting brighter, right? Getting brighter. So at this stage, this casino is no longer material form. So as you remember that when we meditate on the art casino disc, so we make uh, from uh, the clay, right? We make from the clay. Clay is material form. But when you look at that uh, casino disc, it is just clay. It's real material form. But when you see in your mind's eye, and you see it as a material form, the real material form, then your mind is getting brighter, that casino takes or device also getting brighter, and shining. But all these clay disappear. Only the shining, shining sucker ball, right? So therefore, so that shining mental image uh, that uh, how do you say that casino or a shining luminous sake is no longer material form, no longer rupa. It is just a mental image. It is just a concept in the mind. It is mind created that one, not real material, right? This, this is very important one. Very very important to know that. So when we arrive this stage, that shining and luminous sake is no longer material form. It is a mental image. It is a concept created by our mind. Our mind created it. It's not reality. It's not parameter. It is just concept in our mind, right? So therefore, therefore all, all the, all the uh, fine material, fine material jhana, so their object is uh, concept, concept, not reality, not reality, right? Not per matter. The mind free from mental hindrances, it is more and more shining, and luminous sign. So as you know, the sake is getting luminous and shining. Such a bright and clear sake sign is called counterpart sign. Counterpart sign. 
and all. Another one, identical sign, which is identical with the original art disk, right? Which is identical or replica of, not real one, but a copy of the original art casino disk, right? It is called counter sign. But at this stage, concentration is much more deeper and our mind is just focused on meditation object that it made us not going out uh, for a long time but of course some time will go, right? so when we go some time, some time we may have sensory desire some time we may have uh, a wave, etc, right? now the mind just anchors countable sign Meditator is at the door of the first jhana. Now we call it assess jhana, assess concentration. Upasara samadhi, upachara samadhi, upachara samadhi. Now at the doorstep of the, the first jhana. So remember that why we, well, when we attain the first jhana, it is together with thought, we take up, we chara, Piti, Sukha, Ekagata, right? Ekagata. Now we are at the doorstep of the first jhana. So meditators start to eliminate mental hindrances, panchatniparana, one after another. We take a dispersed sloth and torpa. This is very important. Night time, when we are thinking a lot, we cannot sleep, right? We cannot sleep. Because we do not have sloth and torpor. <laughs> we take a despair, sloth and torpor. Even it's quite clear, you know, daily uh, when we are sleeping, right? Sometimes a lot of thinking can, thinking a lot. And we take a brain so many objects. We take a brain our mind to so many objects. Brain to our family. Brain to the, the holiday trip like this, right? Wherever, wherever you like, you're thinking a lot. We take away your problem, it creates suffering. But it's not good, right? If we take away to your problem, it's not good. So like this, if we have a lot of, we take a lot of thinking, a lot of thought, we don't have sloth and torpor. But we fall asleep if we have a lot of sloth and torpor, right? So therefore, but here in we take in meditation, so our mind sometimes, our mind is not fresh in meditation. By this time, so we have to bring our mind to the meditation object, right? With the help of energy, energy or effect. So we have to bring our mind to the meditation object. Bring our mind to the meditation object. In, in this way, Lord then proper disappear. So here, at this assess concentration stage, so we take up despair, the sloth and torpor. We chara drive away doubt. Here, we chara me, uh, we call it initial application, right? Or examination. So we chara examine uh, the, the meditation object. So here, our meditation object now is a shiny sake ball. Shiny, right? Shiny. So we chara examine that meditation object without thinking anything. So only just examining, anchoring that meditation object. So therefore, we know the meditator know meditation object very clearly. The meditator know the nature of nimeda. So in this way, that he, he doesn't have any doubt. We chara despair, doubt, right? We did remove a way. So if you are, if you like that meditation object, you will like it. So you will have um, a joy and rapture in your mind. So the moment you are meditating on that, because your mind is not going anywhere, just focus on, just fixed to that shining socket then you begin, begin to like it you have a lot of joy here different type of joy, right? from your body, from your mind 
So you have a PT. So if you have PT, or if you have dry, there's no airway, right? There's no airway. It's quite reasonable. So here, he did remove airway. Sukha dispersed, breathless, and worry. Normally, if we have sukha, bodily and mentally, no worry. Our, our body is still, right? Tranquil. So if we do not have sukha, breathless, and worry. Here, your meditator is taking only one meditation object. Full of dry, and he is examining meditation object, and we take out all we bring to the meditation object. So in this way, he has mental and uh, the lot of pleasure physically and mentally, right? So therefore, sukha or pleasure, despair, breathless, and worry. Most importantly, ikagata one pointedness of the mind displays sensory desire so all these are five hindrances so if your mind is fixed one pointedness of the mind is fixed to meditation object no thinking about anything it's logical to think that no sensory desire just thinking or just uh, lock right that meditation object. So therefore, most importantly, ikagata displays sensory desire. So if we have vitaka, vichara, piti, sukha, ikagata, that will be the first jhana. Right? The first jhana. So that means, so the moment you can remove all the five hindrances, you attain the first jhana. If we say that, in other words, we can say that if you have uh, initial application, apply application to the meditation object, you have a join regarding with the because of meditation object, you have a pleasure bodily and mentally. If, you, if your mind is focused or point to when uh, that only one meditation object, then you attain the first jhana, right? Or these five jhana factors. Rose and Petri. This is a written by Bhante uh, Rewatatama. Rewatatama from Myanmar. After removing all these hindrances, the mind is fixed and locked in the meditation object. That is a, a bright, luminous, and steady sigh, or nimeda. It is bright, luminous, and steady sigh. So therefore, by that time, the mind also luminous. The mind also bright, right? So the mind and nimeda are one. So nimeda is reflection of the mind. The mind is free from five hindrances. So therefore the mind is clear and pure and bright. So therefore meditation object, the reflection of the mind also bright and pure, right? Of course if we remove the first jhana factor, vitaka. Vitaka is a, you know, shaking. Vitaka is a bringing, bringing uh, the mind to the object. Actually, it's a, just like a going to and fro, right? To and fro. So therefore, it's shaking. So, when meditator trying to practice, but here, let, let, me, let me do it. Meditator attain the first five material sphere jhana. The reason why we call five material, because of Nimeda. The moment we attain the first jhana, Nimeda, or shining socket one. It's no more real material one. It is just a concept or mental image created by our mind, right? Our mind. So therefore, it is a material one. But it is 
uh, replica or copy of the material form. Therefore, we use fine material sphere charm, right? The reason why we use fine material. To accept to higher jhanas, Manitita has to remove grosser jhana factors step by step. So when you remove our uh, initial application with tagger, you attain second jhana. If you remove examining or sustain application, you attain that jhana. If you remove join or rapture, PT, you attain the fourth jhana. If you remove pleasure, sukha, then you attain the fifth jhana. So if you attain the fifth jhana, the mind is quite luminous. Be uh, with the fine, I mean, not, not fine, refined, I would say that, refined material, shining and pure animator. The moment we attain the four jhana, of course, that object, the mind is too clear, too bright, and too luminous. So therefore, the reflection of the mind, animator also getting bright, getting reflected. So remember that uh, it is only 9 and 10 inches, right? So that limit is only 9 and 10 inches. So this is a, the fine material jhana. Fine material jhana. How we attain the fine material jhana? By practicing the arc casino disc, right? Now let's talk about immaterial jhanas. Immaterial jhana. So the first immaterial jhana, the face of the infinity of space, akasan in sayedana. Immaterial, it's not material one. Right? Not material. For one who has attained the base of infinity of space, that means for, for one who attained the first immaterial jhana, the perception of form has ceased. This is very important. The perception of form has ceased. So only you don't have perception of form, then you will attain immaterial jhana. Otherwise, you cannot. You cannot, right? It's very important one. So this is a, a new pop up nidora, graduate cessation. So actually, uh, People have a wrong perception that immaterial, immaterial jhanas are not good. Immaterial jhanas are not good. Actually, it's not so. It is a gradual cessation. Even when uh, Sariputta, he became a hand by attaining uh, all the jhana, you know, uh, uh, gradual cessation, gradual cessation. Of course, uh, Venerable Sariputta, why he is practicing the first jhana, why he is entering the first jhana, so he examined the nature of jhana factor, how they arise, how they disappear, the nature, dukkha, and matter. <coughs> then he moved to second jhana, and he, is, he examined how jhana factors in the second jhana arises and disappear. So I have to the less jhana, the less arupa jhana, right? And I will explain that later what. So when you want to attain immaterial jhana, so the perception of form has ceased. Normally we have a lot of perception about form, right? We see people, this is perception of form. And we hear, this is also <laughs> perception of sounds, right? Later we will see it. So because of that, we have a lot of problem, right? If we see the perception of form that we do not like, suffering here, suffering here. But if we do not have the perception of form, less suffering, less suffering. It's very, uh, very philosophical, or very important, right? So therefore, I normally say that. Um, between the different, uh, the different between uh, uh, sense consciousness, 
sense consciousness sorry uh, uh, Kama Vajra sense consciousness and uh, refine material and immaterial consciousness the difference between jhana and kama vajra is that so as a kama vajra chaita we have to rely on so many things right we have to rely on something we see if something we see is not pleasant to us suffering here if we hear unpleasant sound suffering here because we rely on the external object right also the internet object as well but regarding with the jhana you just rely on your mind only you just rely on your mind only so therefore thing that you depend on is only one just like that if our life is dependent on somebody many people we have to look at their faces <laughs> right then if we look if we depend on only one person we have to look at only one person right? if we depend on our own no need to look at everyone <laughs> nibbana is like this nibbana no base no base if you attain nibbana no base no dependent therefore actually in uh, Ethiopia there is one soda it's called Nisaran uh, uh, Anisida Anisida means not dependent on Nibbana doesn't depend on anything Nibbana doesn't depend on something you see something you hear something you eat like this no dependent on independent of freedom so very very but here also now we try to reduce independency right now immaterial jhana state you are not dependent on form you don't have perception of form actually you have a your happiness is getting higher and higher because you have less dependency right you don't need to rely on form but when you are entering fine material jhanas rupa vajra jhana but you rely on that shiny sake, right? So you are relying on that, I want to say the nimeda, that nimeda. If that nimeda is not shining, you are not happy, right? You are not happy because you rely on that, that object. Here, in material jhana, you try to reduce the amount of independent uh, dependency right you you are not relying on uh, dependent on uh, form right so therefore uh, one of the students asked two weeks ago right if the fire break off whether we can uh, came off from the jhana <laughs> I don't know I think when we uh, when we attain immaterial jhana I think uh, you may have a less contact with the outside world right Let's go with the outside all. So therefore, I story two story, right? Uh, a disciple of Alara Kalama. As you know, the Alara Kalama attained uh, the uh, Tha immaterial jhana, Tha immaterial jhana that we are going to learn. As you know, he does not he he does not know that uh, you know five hundred polaka by right he does not hear he does not feel it because he doesn't uh, depend on the form right so therefore he doesn't hear but he have perception of the mind even though he is awake even though he has perception of mind and he doesn't hear but the Buddha said that uh, one time the Buddha was uh, meditating so at the time the thunderbolt struck right with a you know uh, a big noise and two farmers and four cows died at once but the Buddha 
doesn't have the, uh, to the border, nothing happened to the border. But many people came approach to the border. Uh, ascetics, they are, uh, don't you know that there is a very uh, long, oh no, dangerous thunderbolt, right? Thunderbolt. And two farmers are uh, dead, right? Two farmers are dead. And four calls. But nothing happened to you, what have they? And the Buddha said that, I do not know. Are you sleeping? <laughs> 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 no, I am not, the Buddha said. I'm not sleeping. The, the Buddha said, he has perception. That means he's meditating. Then I will say that um, it will be um, uh, the, the false immaterial jhana, the last one. Neither perception or non-perception. So he didn't notice. Or the, uh, if you land even the first one, you will know it. You will know it. Here. With the passing away of perception or sensory impingement. The passing away of perception or sensory impingement. So there will be a lot of noise outside. So those sounds cannot touch your ear. There will be a lot of, lot of thin, a lot of thin, a lot of smell maybe, a lot of smell. So that smell cannot touch his uh, sensory perception. The reason is he cut off relying on the form, right? Rupa. Relying on the Rupa. So this is a, the first immaterial jhana. So the base of infinite space with the complete surmounting of perception of form. Here, complete surmounting of perception of form. So there is no, cannot see. You will not see it, you will not hear it when you attain immaterial jhana. You will not get smell or you will, you will not know you are touching. Totally complete surmounting of perception of form, right? With the passing away of perception of sensory impingement. So even though a very bit noise, even though very uh, bad smell cannot impinge in his uh, sensory uh, senses, senses, right? So the moment one attain uh, the first symmetry jhana. With the known attention to perception of diversity. So here, Nanata Senyanami, we have a lot of perception in our mind. Perception, uh, perception about people, the places, and food, everything. But here, he ignore everything. No intention to perception of diversity. Perceiving space is infinite or infinite space. Nanto Akaso. A bagel enters and dwells in the base of infinity of space. Akasa Nisayetana. So I think uh, it will take a little bit time, a little bit time to explain this. So anyway, we have to explain to understand, right? But sorry that I cannot write on uh, how to say how to attain immaterial jhana. <laughs> it's not easy to write. <laughs> but I was I was trying to uh, explain, right? To be the best way. Remember that the moment we attain five the last uh, the fifth five material jhana. Rupa Vajra Jhana, right? The fourth Rupa Vajra Jhana. So our meditation object is shiny and luminous sake. Uh, the di in diameter will be only nine or ten inches, right? Ten inches. For those who want to attain immaterial jhana, so in the meditation process, he know that the perception of form is very dangerous. Why meditating, that shiny sake became less luminous or less bright, despite the away here. He doesn't like it. 
he wants to make that shiny ball getting brighter and brighter. But sometimes it doesn't happen. He will hear. So therefore, he doesn't like to rely on perceptual form. Even perceptual that shiny socket. He wants to remove it. And he knows that if he can remove that shiny socket, in other words, it is a mental image that is connected with the form. So to attain immaterial jhana, so we have to remove perception of form, right? So that shiny socket is perception of form. So if he can remove that one, so his concentration will be getting steady, getting stable. If he doesn't rely on material form, then he will, be, he will have a, uh, I want to say, a better and also uh, more happiness, more happiness, right? So therefore, you want to attain material jhana. So to remove, how to remove that one? So now we have only 9 and 10 inches, right? Then you have to practice with the 5 mastery of the jhana, right? So you have to practice uh, to, to, to clear in uh, the fifth jhana again and again and again, again. And you're trying to uh, develop your concentrations. So when you develop your concentration, that shining socket, a luminous socket, getting brighter and brighter, right? And getting clearer and clearer. Then you're trying to enlarge that 10 feet, 10 inches socket into 1 feet 1 and 2 feet 1, 3 feet, 10 feet, just like a socket around this temple. You're trying to enlarge. Remember that we are trying to enlarge the sake with the power of the mind. Especially, our mind is concentrated. One pointedness of the mind. All the attention go to that meditation object, that shiny sake, nimeda, right? Now you are trying to enlarge bit by bit. One, uh, one inch, oh sorry, one feet, ten feet, the sake just like Mangala Vihara. The sake just like Singapore. Try to enlarge with your mind, right? With power, with power. So you try to enlarge just like our cloth. Our cloth. The sake, shiny sake is getting bigger, right? Getting bigger. So if you can, uh, how do you say, enlarge uh, up to the as, as much as you can as much as you can as much as you, you wish right then the whole space will be shining sake actually that one is material form a copy of material form a concept a mental image created by your mind a very getting bigger right bigger so what what you do is you trying to forget about that a very big sake, shining sake. And you visualize in your mind, you with the weight power. Space is infinite. Space is infinite. Infinite space. Infinite space. You trying to visualize that very big sake. I say space. I say space. If we visualize as a space, nothing, right? Nothing. Here we have a lot of people here. The table, a lot of table, my fan, aircon, etc. Then I'm trying to remove with the weight power. No people, no table, nothing, right? Then the whole, uh, the whole place became space. If, in my mind, if this is 
it became space, nothing to attach, right? Nothing to, to be angry. This is we power. So here also, so for those who want to attain immaterial jhana, he tried to reduce the amount of dependency to the material object, right? So the really shining saga is material, the copy of material object. So he visualized, he imagined himself with the concentration, the power of concentration, the power we power, and he infinite space, infinite space, infinite space. Later on, with the power of concentration, the power of the mind, that very bit sake became space. No more material form. So in his mind, there is no perception of form. Right? Look at this one. No intention, no work on the, with the known attention to perception or diversity. So if you look at this one, much clearer. With the complete surmounting of perception of forms. Even though you use your way power to, uh, to make that very big shining sake, uh, with the way power you try your infinite space. You try to visualize in your mind as a infinite space, infinite space, infinite space. But in your mind, you still have perception of form. But try to do it again. Infinite space, infinite space, hundreds and thousands of times, millions and billions of times. But of course, if you have a lot of perfection, a lot of power, me, you can do it very quickly. You can do it very quickly. But if you have less perfection, you have to do it many times, right? But later on, so there will be no perception of form in your mind. So that very big one became sake, uh, space, space, right? So I'm gonna give you another example. You go to uh, uh, Sentosa, so you see, you, you just look at the ocean, right? In the ocean, there will be, there will be sand, sand sh ship, right? Sand ship. So when you see them, your mind is not free, right? Then you're trying to uh, imagine total space, no ship, nothing, right? So you feel very free, right? Very free. So this is power of the mind. So you, uh, you're trying to uh, meditate that very big shining socket as the infinite space. You're trying to visualize this infinite space infinite space, infinite space. So later on, so all the perception of form will disappear. So in your mind, there's only one perception, that is space, right? Space. Here also, when I came here, nothing, I do not see anything. Just meditating, space, infinite space, space. If I am doing thousand and thousand times, I use my willpower, right? You always disappear. <laughs> yeah, of course, in my mind, in my mind, it's willpower. Just like that, just like that, right? So here, the meditator, he reduced the, the amount of independency, or dependency to the, to the form, right? Material form. So this way, so, Normally, he doesn't like, before he practiced, before he attained the first Arupa jhana, the first immaterial jhana, he doesn't like that shining sake. So doesn't like me, he has a way, right? A way. Now, actually, it's very important that when you attain the first jhana, all the sensual pleasure became a danger for you. Now you are entering the first jhana. There, you know, the slightest degree of desire to sensual pleasures arises. 
you see it as a danger. You see it as a disease. You're very afraid that if your mind inclined to sensory, uh, sensory desire or a way, then you fall from the jhana. You're afraid because jhana is better than sensory perceptions, right? Better than sensory perceptions. So when you attain second jhana, vitaka is a danger for you. When you attain third jhana, vitaka vichara, right? And when you attain the fourth jhana, if you have a slight degree of joy in your mind, you don't like it. So that joy, the rapture, shaking your happiness, right? You don't like it. You see it as a sickness or disease. It is mentioned in, uh, in the Ingotra Nikai, the Buddha said that. But when you attain the first immaterial jhana, the base of infinite space, when you attain this jhana, so you're really afraid that the perception of form appear in your mind. You're really afraid. So when you have perception of form, you fall from immaterial jhana. So therefore, the perception of form is a danger or a thorn or a disease for you when you attain this one. So therefore, meditators trying to run away from perception of form. So actually, the commentator gave a very beautiful example, simile. So one of the kind go to the forest uh, to do something. But in the forest, he see a very big snake. But he ran away. The snake ran after him. <laughs> but he ran away, ran away, ran away. Cannot look at. Dare not to look at. Uh, look back. He ran away. And he is near the village. Actually, now he is safe. But he looked back. But he see rope. So he thinks that it is a snake he ran away <laughs> he ran away again it is not a real snake right but he thinks that it is dangerous in his mind right his experience in the forest he see very big snake but even though he see the very uh, uh, the rope just like a snake right and he ran away again just like that actually therefore the Buddha said that the mind of meditator, the mind who is in jhana is, uh, cannot be think, cannot be think. It's very fascinating and also surprising, and astonishing, right? Astonishing. Now we have a lot of, uh, we are not independent. We always rely on people, right? We always rely on beautiful songs, music, and we are looking at the movie, right? So we, are, we have a lot of, you know, uh, we are relying on a lot of things, but we are not free, we are not free. But here, meditator, at the, uh, the fifth Rupa Chana, so actually it is not a real material form. It is just a mental image created by the mind. But meditator is afraid. This is a copy of material form. He ran away, right? Then he attained uh, by imagining or visualizing that very big shining, uh, shining uh, nimeda as an infinite space. Infinite space. Actually, it is a kind of, you know, deceiving our mind, right? We're trying to, just like a typical of a fee, right? We're trying to, uh, how do you say, uh, just trick our mind, right? Tricking our mind, like this. So here, by visualizing the object infinite space, then our mind, uh, you know, uh, Eventually, we came to believe that it is an infinite space, no material form at all, right? 
So in this way, if there is no perception of material form, and he attain immaterial the first time, very bit difficult, right? Very bit difficult. So here, when you attain the first jhana, you do not rely on the form, right? You just rely on uh, the infinite space. So infinite space is not reality. This one also a concept created by our mind. It doesn't exist. Well, our mind created it, right? So therefore we call it panyati. This one is a um, uh, the base of infinite space. The infinite space is not reality, it is just concept, just panyati, right? Because we created, our mind created it. Any question? Okay, very good question. So actually to attain jhanas are very difficult. <laughs> Why not really go to vipassana? <laughs> <laughs> of course, different people have a different uh, mindset, right? Some people want to attain jhana, right? Some people want, uh, some people really go to vipassana. Of course, the aim of Buddhism is to stop suffering. So if we can go to vipassana, Correctly, then we can take Nibbana, of course. But um, the jhanas are very powerful too to see the real nature of phenomena. So therefore, as I said, I think you can note down one of the soda, very beautiful sodas, a new Pada soda from uh, Majjhima Nikaya, soda number triple one. So the number triple one from Majjhima Nikaya. So when you look at, when you read that soda, you will see the beauty of the sodas. So Venerable Sariputra, uh, he trying to attain the first jhana. During the first jhana, uh, he uh, trying to um, uh, see the, the nature of jhana factor, how Vitaka arises. How PT arises like this, right? But in the soda, not only five jhana factors, a lot of jhana factors there, right? So, regarding to Venerable Sariputta, he the first jhana, and he examined the nature of the real nature of the reality of jhana factor. Second jhana, the same. Third jhana, the fourth jhana. You see, Ruba. Full level, right? The Arubhajana, Arubhajana was the same. Then he examined. And second Arubhajana, Ta Arubhajana. And he examined the nature of jhana factors. But when he came, when he uh, came to uh, the last one, the fourth Arubhajana, that he cannot. Uh, examine the nature of jhana factors. I want to say that during jhana, during you are entering jhana, that he have to come out from the jhana, in March, in March from the jhana, that he review uh, the nature of jhana factors. Because uh, neither perception or non perception, very subtle one, right? Very difficult to see the nature of jhana factor. Then you have to emerge from the jhana and examine it. The from is after examining, he go to uh, cessation of uh, perception and feeling. Sanya, we read the nidora. So when, when you attain that one, so there is no perception, no feeling at all. So the mind totally stop walking. No mind at all. There is no uh, material form caused by the mind. So there is no material form caused by the mind. So there is only material form or rupa 
caused by the weather, caused by the food that you eat previously. So the ma here, the most important thing is, even though we use perception and feeling, so perception and feelings are the most important ingredients, so the most prominent one. So therefore, the Buddha used only two, but it implies that, so in that um, attainment, not jhana, it's attainment. I think um, some people say that um, uh, immaterial, immaterial attainments are not jhana. The Buddha do not use that one as a jhana. But it's a open to question. Maybe I need to look at the soda again. But um, uh, the one of the scholars said that uh, during the jhana, you cannot examine jhana factors. Actually, it is not so. In many soda, the Buddha clearly said that during the jhana, you can examine uh, jhana factor, the nature of jhana factor, right? So the moment you attain at the first jhana, you examine the nature of jhana factor, the nature of PT, the nature of equanimity, the nature of pleasure, etc., right? You can examine during your jhana. But of course, the moment you examine, there may be some bawanga, maybe some bawanga, right? Not continuous uh, jhana consciousness. So anyway, um, so there we have a lot of soda that, that confirm that uh, during the jhana, even during the jhana, we can examine, right? So therefore, therefore, regarding with the jhana, a lot of controversy. Maybe I will try to, I will try my best to teach jhana in the soda class. <laughs> Not here, <laughs> soda study class. Because the learning uh, Buddhist teaching with the soda is much better. We can prove it, right? You can see it by yourself. Now I'm talking mindset. Whatever I said, uh, whether you believe you or not, just listening, right? <laughs> no proof. No proof. So therefore, uh, I'm trying to give um, uh, sotas. That's very important uh, evidence, right? Actually, by, for those who want to know further, you can go and read this one. In Gautra Nikaya, chapter 9, Sutta number 32. The best way to learn, right? So if you go and read the sodas, then you will know it, you can examine it, right? If you are reading the soda very often, you will know it, the flow of the soda, right? So in, the, in this way, you can examine by yourself. You can determine by yourself, right? Whether it is right or wrong. Right or wrong. So regarding with the vipassana, as I said, uh, in um, Lokotra Cheda, uh, in summary, we have a eight local dry chaita, right? So if we multiply, we have 40 local dry chaita. The reason is that when somebody attain uh, Sota Bhati Mega during the first jhana stage, right? That is a Sota Bhati Mega chaita related to the first jhana. But during second jhana, then you attain Sota Pati Maga Cheda. So in this way, we have five jhana, right? Five rupa jhana. So look, Sota Pati Maga also became multiplied five. So totally it became 40. So the reason why that the reason why I want to share is that so through jhana, either the first jhana or second jhana or the fifth jhana, you can attain uh, the supra, supra mundane consciousness. Supra mundane consciousness. So the moment you examine the nature of reality, the real nature of uh, mental and physical phenomena, mind, mind, body, right? Mind and body. Then you examine it during your jhana. Then later you, you have an insight, an insight that is vipassana. You realize the nature of pity arises 
and disappear, rises and disappear. You USA realize the nature of the mind. So if you realize that nature, that reality during your meditation, and that can apply in your daily life as well. Not only, not only the body is subject to change, the mind also subject to change. You will realize that you, are, you, you can apply that knowledge in your daily life. When somebody dies, you have insight here, already have insight. That is the nature of impermanence. Something that arises has the nature of cessation, like this, right? That is called insight or knowledge or wisdom. So if you have such insight, such wisdom, you have less suffering. If you become Sotapanna, you relieve suffering, 25% uh, suffering. <laughs> Sakatagami, 50% suffering. Anagami, 75. Arahan, 100%. <laughs> no suffering at all. So therefore, I think um, uh, some people do not like the work. Uh, many people do not want to translate Dukkha as a suffering. For me, I'm, I like suffering. <laughs> because the reason is the, the real meaning is suffering. Dukkha, when you look at Sotas, you will see, right? Even, uh, even the first, um, the first sermon, right? The first sermon. How the Buddha uh, define the Dukkha Satcha, you will see it really is suffering, right? So one of the wisdom scholars, scholar from the West, said that recently, maybe two years ago, I think. Actually, I didn't notice. So the only he said that I noticed. Buddhist monks always talk about suffering. They seem to be very happy. <laughs> <laughs> they are using suffering, right? The word suffering. But contrary to that, they seem to be happy. The reason is Buddhism just look at the reality, right? The reality. Even the nature of death. So we use it as a meditation method. So the Buddha recommend that we are subject to time. I am subject to die. I am subject to die. I am subject to die. Meditating on that. Meditating. So by meditating like this, the nine do no fear or death. That is a true wisdom, right? Wisdom. So Buddhism rely on wisdom. But many people rely on faith in the world. Even in Buddhist, uh, even among the Buddhist, Many people rely on faith, right? Of course, faith is very important. But without faith, we cannot practice, right? Very important. But faith must be combined with the wisdom or insight, right? Insight. So therefore, um, of course, to attain jhana is not easy, but different disposition. Some people like to attain jhana, right? The eleven practice. But some people, their aim is to stop suffering, right? Then they really go to vipassana. So vipassana simply means seeing the real nature of phenomena, my, uh, mental and physical phenomena. So if we see the real nature of our body, our mind, less suffering, right? Less suffering. Any question? Mind's eye, okay, okay. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Good question, eh? okay. okay. Where mind or mental, what do you mean, mind or mental object? Mind's eye. Oh, actually, it's an uh, idiot, an idiot. It's talking about in the mind. In the mind's eye, me. Uh, how do you say? Using idiomatic way, idiomatic way. 
because normally when we see with our own eye, very clear, right? Very clear. By using in your mind's eye. So that means the shining circuit is very clear in your mind. Just idiomatic expression. It's not something uh, new. In the mind. In the mind. Same thing. Yeah. In the mind. <laughs> Actually, um, I, even here, I didn't. did you attend uh, the first lessons? The first two or three lessons? Or second lesson? Because it, uh, in Buddhism, we do not believe that mind exists somewhere. Mind doesn't exist anywhere. It arises depending on conditions, causes. With I, and something to see, right? I is one cause. The the uh, some, something to see is one cause. Then we have a in how to say um, um, uh, intention or not intention. Attention, we have attention. Even though we see somebody, if we do not have attention, right? We don't see it. Attention also one of the cause. Based on those causes, mind arises. So we cannot find where the mind is. But of course, Buddhism, Buddhism said that um, mind arises based on the heart. Based on the heart, not the brain. Not the brain. So serious meditators, they really know themselves. So here, they feel it here. Then only um, go to the brain very, very quickly. Very quickly like this. Okay, so time is there. So, oh, this, uh, we have a, oh, sorry, sorry, one announcement. Teacher Lily will announce. So next week, there will be no class. One week off, huh? <laughs> Yeah, just two announcements. Uh, next Monday, 12th of June, 7.30, uh, Monday Chakapala will give a talk about dependent origination. Same place, uh, 7.30. Then in Ju uh, July the 3rd, I believe you all have learned a lot of, uh, uh, or they have recommended a lot of suitors to all of you, but do you really know how to be suited? So we have invited uh, Brother Pia Tan, some, some people might know him, to give a talk on how to read sutta and what benefits do we get from reading sutta. So, uh, 3rd of July, 7.30 is a Monday at this hall. Okay, thank you. Okay, you need something. Yeah, let's say in China. Ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-